All right, people, welcome back. More card reviews. And today we're looking at a Cyframe card. Not the biggest fan of Cyframes. I am really not. Like, I'm the deck to be kind of uh, self-playing, kind of linear. It's kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I probably, I think I'd rather play Ghost Tricks than play Cyframe. At least I'm not, like, negating every single thing that I do and actually trying to do something. Cyframes are just really passive. They're just like, yeah, if you, like, activate a spell, I'll negate that. If I trap, I'll negate that. If you attack me, I'll negate that. Like, I'll negate this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. <laughs> you know, it's ugh, yeah. So I'm not the biggest fan of Cyframes. You can kinda tell by uh and maybe other people too by Yu-Gi-Oh! Tear Draft like season two because uh Cyframes are not even nowhere to be found in season two. Actually someone was actually kinda of upset about that. They're like, What? Cyframes are in season two? Like one, no one selected it, and two, I wasn't gonna force anybody to play that kind of deck, you know. At first we had uh Cyframes as, as tier two, but we had to take it off because I didn't want to force anybody to play Cyframes. But then that wasn't the most hated deck. I think it was like uh Ritual Beast or even my Ritual Beast isn't in season two. It's cause it was there as a tier two deck no one wanted it and then the last people to select the last two people you know i wasn't sure if they wanted that frame so i offered you know, i was like you know what you want to change it up for fluffles and they both agreed yeah let's go with fluffles instead so that's the reason why uh, uh ritual beast in there but side frames no so uh but they're getting a couple new cards they got that one new monster who seems like it's very helpful and they got here a new trap card as well so uh, i mean with their uh with their powerful powerful uh card card b which is like the most balanced version of the freaking pot of greed you can ask for. Like everybody's always asking for like, you know, pot of greed is some version of it. Like it's right there. It's car card D. Perfect. That's like the perfect balance of, of verse curses reward. Not not fucking pot of cupidity or pot of desires. That card's broken. Like, no 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 no. You know? Uh, and of course they can play that powerful drowning mirror for since they don't have too many monsters. Too bad they can't play cards and lines because they kinda need their monsters in their hand, but you know, you know, you get the point. Deck is still pretty powerful. I could I could I could say is that that's a definitive tier two in the meta. I could easily see it sneaking up and doing pretty well. I think it did like well in the nationals. Anyway, let me actually get to the card. Hello. This is Side Frame Accelerator. It's a continuous trap that reads. Once a turn you can pay five hundred life points, then target one side frame monster you control. Banish it from the field, but return it in your next standby phase. Okay. So that can be, if you don't have your field spell set up to, you know, summon a side frame, summon a side frame, and then immediately synchro summon, you can have this on the field, and when you summon that side frame, it gets banished on end phase unless, you know, you do something with it. You can use this, pay 500, banish that side frame, it'll come back during the next standby phase, but then what are you doing with it? Like, that, that's the kind of thing that I was pondering and I was wondering. Like, for example, I summon a side frame. To neg I negate something, I summon a side frame, side frame summons a driver. Then I use my this card to banish driver, and it comes back during the next phase. I mean, sure, driver is kind of sort of a beater, so that, I mean, eh. I think, I think he's 2400, 2500, level 6, so. But it's not like I can just normal summon one of my side frame tuner monsters and sink into Omega. They can't be normal summoned, so what am I doing? You know? The other idea that I thought was pretty decent with the accelerator is you can. Uh, protect Omega during the battle phase. Uh, that, that's definitely a problem when it comes to Omega. Uh, Omega is definitely a difficult monster to get your hands around during the main phase. You know? Just like, oh, well, I can make a cast down and try to spin him, but he'll just hop out of the way. Unless I, you know, get everything out of my hand where he can't take something out of my hand to hop out of the way, he's going to keep, you know, going in and out and in and out and in and out as long as it's during the main phase. But the battle phase, you know? Like, I, you can summon Omega, I can try to bomb this trap hole, you could chain, hop out of the way, take it out of my hand. But if you have Omega and you attack me and you run into a Mirror Force, Omega can only activate during the main phase, so rip, you know? This card on the hand with this plus Omega, it can protect Omega from getting wrecked during the battle phase. So I can be like, I have this on the field with Omega, I attack, you play Mirror Force, I chain this, pay 500, target my Omega, gone, come back during the sound phase. So. Uh, like I said, he, he's powerful with his dodgy effects, but, you know, he's definitely, definitely no, uh, you know, uh, Evil Swarm Thunderbird. And Thunderbird is no wind-up rabbit. Like, wind-up rabbit is like the pentacle, pinnacle, pentacle, pentacle? That's not even a word. Pinnacle of, uh, just hopping out of the way. Because it's a rabbit. You see what I did there? Yeah. Well, Thunderbird, something has to activate, so you can easily handle hun Thunderbird. It's 1600, but when it comes back to 1900, but it's 1600, all I have to do is just, you know, summon a Dunko Sekka. <laughs> I didn't activate anything, but uh, yeah, but Thunderbird can still go off during the battle phase because you're activating that mirror force, so I'm going to chain and hop out of the way. But Mega, nope, only can activate during the main phase. So, but this, this at least allows it to get a little bit stronger, so uh, it's not terrible. Scarlet still has one more effect. Uh, once per turn, if another uh, face up side frame cards, cards, card or cards, you control, leaves the field, okay, uh, except by battle. So that's interesting, interesting. 
So that is, uh, I don't believe their field spell says five frame. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. But, uh, you know, this card says side frame and other cards like that uh, leads the field. Does their field spell say side frame? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to type it in before I look like a fucking idiot. Does their field spell say side frame? Yeah, side frame circuit. Yeah. All right. So it's uh, when, if, when a face up side frame card or cards you control leaves the field, uh, just except by battle, but. You know, sometimes you MST that fell spell, you get rid of the fill. You get rid of the fill spell, you can handle it. But this card here, this card in the fill spell, they get rid of the fill spell. That counts as a side frame card. Doesn't say monster card. Uh, leads the field. So if I battle, you can special summon one side frame monster from your hand. Okay, so you summon the side frame monster from your hand, but then what do you do with it? See, see, you see, this is my problem. This is my problem. Like, what, what you're summoning these monsters, but what are you doing with them? Like, am I just supposed to just oh, a side frame monster left the field except by battle? So. Uh, I summon another Cypher monster from my field, from my hand, and then banish it to keep it there. Like I think I'd rather just get the negate. I'd rather get the negate with the Cypher, and that will summon Driver. Hopefully, have my field spell due into the sync place. But really, I just think this card is decent to save Omega. Outside of that, I don't think this card is like meh. Yeah, you know, like that other that Cypher monster. Yeah, that was good. This card, boo, no, I don't like none of this. So. Mm. There you go, I reviewed a Cypher card. I reviewed a lot of Cypher cards here on Card Review for a person who's not a big fan of the deck and has never played the deck at all. So maybe I would have more insight to this card and how good it is. Maybe maybe I'm missing something if I actually played the deck. But from what I've seen in the deck and, you know, how the deck plays, I'm, I don't know. I don't think they're going to play this. Maybe one, maybe one, but I don't, I don't see it. So, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Of course, I will be back next week with some more cards to look at. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And see you guys next week with some more card review. Thanks for watching.